I'm Jack Worrell from JM Engineering. This is a Chicago D&K press brake that we just upgraded with all new electrics. Like most Chicago press brakes, it was in fantastic mechanical condition, but the electrics were just a complete nightmare. If you go over here and look at the original control panel, there was no main motor starter. Uh, there was no lockout. They were using a barrel switch. There'd been a fire in there at one point in the transformer, maybe even more than one point. So what we've done is we've installed a brand new press control from ISB and a brand new Merlin 3000 light press from ISB. And we've incorporated this into an electrical enclosure built in our custom panel shop. To go inside it, we have a lockout disconnect. Everything is brand new. We don't use any fuses, circuit breakers, interlock motor starters, and properly set overloads. Down the bottom, we also have a lockout on the air, which is a lockout exhaust that's required by OSHA, a dual safety valve, and a pressure switch as required by OSHA. Now, the side of this guard, this is Lexan. It's shatterproof. This guard opens up so that you can load the cooling easily without having to go through the front of the press brake. We've modified the linkage with an air cylinder. Now, this is very important. This air cylinder modification allows that all important treadle to be maintained so that you can feather the clutch. Uh, most other companies all they'll do is cut this off, anchor an air cylinder there and hook an electric foot switch on it it's off on and you can't feather the treadle. It's almost like having an air cylinder controlling the truck on the clutch. It's just it's violent. So right now our press control is off and our light curtain is off through a keyed selector switch I'll turn it on. The indicator tells us power on. We've got four reverse. So we start it up. The press control turns on. And so does the Merlin 3000. As part of this upgrade package, we've also added an electric ram adjust up down motor. This was being adjusted by hand before. So activate is very simple. I turn that on, the red light indicates that the press brake will not cycle. The press brake is uh, locked out right now and it's completely inoperable. I can adjust my ram up, or I can adjust it down. After I turn it off, I have to hit reset. Okay. Now this press control is equipped with an LED circular array which shows you exactly where the crankshaft is positioned on the machine. So when you're cycling it, you can see exactly where it is. And you can see it also has in degrees down here, one degree. Go ahead and cycle it again. Beautiful. Now if you were to interrupt the light curtains on the way down, the press brake will stop instantly. And there's also a stop time meter built into that which will tell you how many milliseconds it took to stop so you can properly position the light curtains. The way we're getting this reading is through a resolver mounted on the left hand side. This is a 13 to 1 ratio press brake. So we have to use four gears to obtain the proper ratio. And that's on a spring base in case anything is quite concentric, as chains sometimes are. It'll just bounce up and down. Now if I go over to here, you might want this press brake to stop at the quarter inch point. And that's where the light curtains automatically mute. It's very simple to do. I put it to run. I have to enter a password. Go to my bending zones. Right now it's disabled. Now it's enabled. I can program down to one degree where I want this machine to stop and the light curtains to mute. Now it's going to set, stop at exactly 160 degrees every single time. And once again, we're going to interrupt the light curtains on the way down and show you the stop. Instantaneous. Another thing which we do is we always put sign kits on the machine, warning, all along the front of the machine so you can uh, be in compliance with OSHA. Again, this was done by JM Engineering. 
visit us at www.jmengineering.com or give us a call at 508-809-6069. Thanks for watching.